Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So as many of you guys know, I purchased a BMW E61. Now, as I said to you, this car isn't what it seems. And like I said to you guys, I would show you the results of this car. Now, when I actually show you the results of this BMW E61, you guys can make up your mind if you think it's worth what I actually paid for this car. And I'm gonna be telling you how much I actually paid for this car later on, probably in this video. But I want you guys to actually see how much is actually wrong with it. And obviously I've got a lot to actually correct. Bearing in mind, obviously I got the car with no history, you know, not even had the oil changed, just, you know, being driven by the normal owner who owns these cars. Obviously a lot of people have the money to buy them and then just basically neglect them and then just pass them on like many people do with a lot of expensive cars. So there is a lot I've got to get on with to make this car drivable and obviously reliable enough for me. But as I said to you, when I did go there, there was a lot of fault codes in the car. I didn't bother to clear them because it was useless um, to clear them because the car didn't have a check engine light or anything like that anyway. So clearing them wasn't going to make any difference. So I thought I'd leave them there so I can shoot the video when I actually bring it back to show you guys everything that's actually wrong with this BMW E61. So let's get on to it. So here we are guys with the launch Creator Elite for BMW. Now you guys already know I'm a big fan of the scan tool. You guys know I've done many, many videos regarding this scan tool. And as you can see here, I choose to use this. This is what I took with me when I went to purchase this car because I'm not gonna carry a big laptop and try and look like something I'm not and try and intimidate the guy. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that will do that, um, try and take a big laptop to go, go and diagnose a car like they know what the fault codes mean or actually what's wrong with it when they don't even have a clue how to use the software themselves, where this scan tool would be more than enough for them to do what they actually need to do. If you do want to pick one of these up, I will link it in my description below. I believe they're around £100 um, to go and purchase and they've been one of the best scan tools I've ever had. Like I say, think of it as having a launch program. If you've got a launch scanner or a top done with the BMW application just on it, it's only got the BMW one for Mini, Rolls Royce, everything to do BMW related. And you can do everything you need to do like you'd find on the more expensive launch scanners that can do all cars on this one application here. But bear in mind, this is only for BMW, Mini and Rolls Royce. But like I said, this is what I prefer to use. Because like I said, I don't need to get big about my boots and go, you know, to people's cars with all my fancy equipment just to try and make it look like, you know, I'm there to intimidate them and try and make it lower their price or whatnot. You know what I mean? I'd rather go something like this, very basic, keep myself humble and just um, go about my business. And that's about it. So let's get onto it and I'm gonna show you the thoughts that are on this car. So on the scan tool, to get into the fault code, you wanna just go around and click diagnose. And obviously you can see there, those are all the brands we've got there. So BMW, Mini and Rolls Royce. As I said to you, you can see it loads up like the launch just on a smaller screen. You can see there BMW, which click okay. You guys already know what this scan tool can do, all the coding, everything you wanna do. It's a really, really good scan tool for the price. You cannot beat it, you cannot knock it. I think it's an absolute incredible, incredible piece of kit for the price. You pay more than that to go to a garage to go and have your codes read or your battery um, registered or whatever you need to do. This scan tool can do it all for a very simple price of hundred pound. Um, last time I advertised the scan tool, I sold out of them all on Amazon and everyone that's got it, many of you guys will be watching this who have the scan tool, will know already all about it and you guys have been able to do everything you need to do also. You can see it reads out the VIM, reads out the mileage, what car it is, so it's an E61, 530D, 03 2007, DUM57 engine. So we'll just click OK and then it will start reading all the car's faults. Once it reads all the car's faults, you'll get them all come up and we can run a health report. And then we can see all the fault codes this car actually has. Like I said, they are still on there. There is quite a few on here that we need to show you so you guys get a drift of what's actually wrong with this car. Because like I said, there is a lot wrong. And obviously I've got to try and eliminate most of the problems on here. And we're going to go through them one by one and try and eliminate it. As you can see, it just runs a scan on all the ECUs inside the car. It will scan even ones that you think you don't have. So a lot of people do get a bit spooked by this thinking they've got something that they didn't think they had. No, it just runs everything in case you do have it anyway. Um, that's the way it does it. So if it's been retrofitted, it will find it. Maybe it hasn't been coded in, maybe the VO hasn't been coded in, maybe someone's powered it, or maybe it's already inside the car. It just hasn't, um, you just ain't had it activated yet. So that's why it reads all the modules in the first place. 
If you can see here now, we've got health report, system scan. Health report is the one we want. They can see here, we've already got six fault codes. We've got another one here. Uh, we'll see how many more we get up. We've got another one, another one there. And we'll see how many more we get as it keeps scanning. Got another one right there. How many more we get? Three there. So you can see right there, the first one is glow plugs. As many of you guys know, that's the one I saw when I got the car. I was expecting it before I even got there. It's just common that this wouldn't have had it done. Glow plugs are obviously out, so they need to be done. Usually when it's all six, it's usually the glow plug relay that's at fault, but we're gonna replace the glow plugs anyway. It doesn't make sense to just replace the relay and the glow plugs. Next one is we've got KGM, mirror heating passenger side 40. So we need to sort that as well, because it's saying that the mirror, the heating is not working. Um, obviously it doesn't cause a fault code, but you know, at the end of the day, I want it fully working. If it's not working, it's gonna cause a big issue, especially if we get any kind of ice or snow and the mirrors can't heat up to actually defrost so you can see out your mirror. So we need to sort that. Next one is window type for light sensor, not established. So it means someone's been playing about with the rain light sensor in here, because it's saying the window type for the light sensor is not established. Or what that can mean is, Someone's had the windscreen change on this car and they haven't had the rain light sensor reignitionalized. Usually you'll get um, a water glass or something like that come out, change the windscreen. They don't do the RLS ignitalization because they don't have the software with them or they don't know how to do it. And then they leave it. Usually that's pretty common to have that. So that'll be another thing we'll have to do. We've got SZM link communication disrupted, button block left. So that's gonna be obviously the button switch, the passenger's window switch as well. So that's telling me there's a problem with either a wiring or a switch um, between the mirror and the switch itself down there. So we need to find out what it is. I've got a feeling though, it's gonna be the actual um, passenger window switch itself, because that's linked onto Olympus with the mirror. So if that ain't working, then the mirror's not gonna work properly either or correctly. We've also got an IHKA, AUC sensor, common. Fogging sensor, the fogging sensor sits in the windshield. So that one is gonna to need to be replaced as well. Probably another code, we've got another one here. Receiver integrated automatic heat and air conditioning system transmitter. So the solar sensor, if you guys don't know where that's located, that's located right on top of your dashboard. If you think it's a speaker, many people seem to think it's a speaker sitting on top of the dash. That's not your speaker whatsoever, that's a solar sensor. Many people ain't aware of that. That is what detects with the heat and when to turn on the right aircon at the right levels. For instance, if it's hot outside, you will notice that when you put your key in, you've probably got your aircon off. A lot of people always ask me this, how to turn it off fully. You can't, that solar sensor picks up if it's too hot outside and will automatically turn your AC on. It picks up as well if it's too cold and will put your heat on as well, that's what the solar sensor's for. It detects the sun and all the, obviously temperatures as well in around you. Um, to know what heat to set the climate control to for you when you get inside the car and when you first put the key in the ignition, that's what it's used for. And if you can see here, it doesn't seem like we've got many other codes here. Those are all the codes we got, but they are like kind of iffy sporadic codes now. There is a lot of people that wouldn't bother to sort these purely because obviously it's not causing a fault. You wouldn't even know they're there unless you scanned them. If you took it to BMW, they'd probably tell you, leave them. You don't need to worry about it. It's not causing a problem on the car. It's not stopping the car driving. Leave them alone. It's all to do with wiring or maybe a battery going flat or something like that, key not working. When in actual fact, it's not. It's to do with a wiring short somewhere. And like I said, we're gonna trace it down, we'll find it. Like I said, I'll do more on a video regarding the solar sensor later on another video. But this is realistically the fault codes we got here. Um, and we got to nail them down and sort it out. And like I said, obviously the gearbox hasn't been serviced. And if you go here, I'm pretty sure if we go into special function and we go into maintenance, I don't know if we got it on this one, but we might have the gearbox oil reset um, here as well for a change because it's an 07. And you've got diesel particulate filter replacement or request regeneration, mechatronic calibration, reset learning functions, oil, reset the interval, so transmission control unit oil balancing. So you've got the oil balancing there as well. So I, I knew we had it. You should have it here. So that, what that does, the oil balancing is gonna correct. That will actually tell you if the oil level is actually correct on these gearbox, because crucial, I did tell many of you just many, many times, even on the old ZF6 HP 19s, on their old 530D, 535D, you won't have this option. Oil is critical to have the correct level on these gearbox, especially on a diesel. Many people don't seem to believe how important it is for the torque converter. 
that will end up stripping against the bell housing badly, especially if it suffers with, because they're prone to hit, especially if you're, you know, ragging them or redlining them constantly, the torque converter will just go and oil is there to stop actually overheating, obviously lubricate it, lubricate everything inside the gearbox. It is so, so vitally important that obviously you check if you have that, make sure you follow that and do the oil balancing correctly um, when you actually change the oil to make sure it's at the right level. That's why BMW fitted it on the ZF6 HP28 gearbox for that reason, to stop people having issues with these gearboxes. That's why the Z6 HP28 is a much better gearbox. You've also got mechatronic calibration and know that does not mean you can go and change the mechatronics and it's gonna work because you need to change the ISNs. So you've got a lot of different things here. We'll run through most of these um, later on in another video when we actually come to using this scan tool. But you get to see here, there's a load of functions that you guys ain't used to seeing on the M52 in previous ones. This is an 07, so there's a lot more functions on here than you would have seen. So guys, as you've seen and now, I've now shown you everything that's actually wrong with this BMW E61. And like I said, those are the fault codes that actually come up when I actually scan it. I never cleared any of them because I just didn't think to at all. I will be trying to sort many of them out and I will go over them, every single one properly, when we're actually rectifying them and let you guys see how to rectify these faults, especially if you've got them. Because I know there's probably many E60s out there that actually have these faults. And obviously there is OCD people out there like me who do want to get them sorted just because they know it's on the car and it's in their head, especially if they scan the car and you've got that fault code there, you just know it's there. Um, even though it's not throwing up a fault code, it ain't affecting the car, but it's just the fact, you know, you know it's a problem and you want to get it rectified. So I'll be showing you guys how to divulge and sort out their mind little problems because I don't see them as big problems and I don't see them as scary problems either. I know I could sort it. So for me, it's a doddle. Like I said too many times, I know these cars like the back of my hand, I know them inside and out. I could tear one to complete a part and probably put it back together probably in less than a month, you know? It's not hard. These cars are really, really not hard to understand. It's just, you know, they get a bad name because of the problems they actually have and because how advanced they were for their time. But as times have moved on, people are getting to learn them, getting to know they're a very good car and very beautiful for, you know, when they were first released. Uh, they're way ahead of his time and it's aging on people now really well. And people are preferring this over the, you know, you know old F-Series and things like that. And people are wanting to learn about them. And the more and more people are learning about them, the more information people are putting out there for others, more and more people are jumping in them because they find it a lot easier to maintain them. So it works really, really well. And obviously, bearing in mind, my channel is very well known for the E60. It's what started this channel. I think it's what's going to end up, you know, being on this channel for the rest of my life. Um, but yes, this car, you guys know, has um, been a big part of me, the E60. And I'm very, very thankful to all of you guys for sticking by me, all of you guys with E60s. E90s, I know many of you out there with E90s as well, but it's mostly E60. That's the car we started with, that's the car I had. Um, and now to keep owning them and owning another one now. And you guys keep watching. I'm very pleased to be here, being able to help many of you guys who own E60 and being able to help you. So thank you very much for watching guys. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.